Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Playful Escape podcast. My name is Kimberly. And my name is Cindy. And we are your hosts. Uh, we had to record our introduction a couple of times because I kept laughing at Cindy. Yeah, uh, we, we record ourselves, too, um, so we can communicate with each other. So we'll try not to talk over each other, which has been helpful, but it does happen. When you get emotional, excited, you start talking over each other, and it, that stuff gets cut out sometimes because you can't hear or understand. Yeah, it, it's really interesting. At least we can have those visual cues. I know we live together, but we can't record in the same room because our mics pick up each other's voices. Yeah. I couldn't hold myself together long enough to do it. But for those of you who are going to be joining us on Patreon, you will be able to access all of that. That's actually kind of funny because speaking of footages and um, possible embarrassing things. Oh, no. Okay, so today, I guess let's say what we're going to do. Yes. It's, it's a little loosey-goosey today, if you will. It's a loosey-goosey day. Yeah, so we were going to talk about something else, and I thought it was too structured, too much planning. I wasn't ready, and I was like, Let, let's just let's just have a chill day. So we're going to ask each other some fun questions that we have online that we've found. And the first question that I'm going to ask, I guess Kim, because I don't know. I feel like this doesn't pertain to me. And I'm going to tweak this question a little bit, too. The question is, have you ever gotten mad at a friend for posting an unflattering photo of you? Um, I don't think so. I, usually, I would ask friends to delete certain photos if it was unflattering or if I wasn't happy with it. Usually, when we take group photos, we'll always look over it to approve it. I don't think anyone has posted an unapproving photo or they'll usually give me a heads up and let me know that they're going to post a photo. So I know one of my friends has a photo of me just literally sticking out my tongue. That's kind of a trademark for myself. And she'll look at me and I'll say, yeah, go ahead and post it. I'm, you know, I make those faces to cheer you up or to kind of change up the way my face looks in a photo. But as long as it's not like an, in a weird angle or it just becomes like a private mm -hmm. joke between us but it's not posted publicly so no I don't get mad at people I might get upset and if so I'll voice my concerns with them but no not mad All right. well I was also going to say are there any unflattering photos of you that exist that you are hiding from the world and the only unflattering photo that I can think of is the picture from like 6th or 7th oh. grade I was wearing a pink striped shirt and my hair was very frizzy. I it, that's the only photo unflattering that... to you because you you don't yeah. like how your hair was. Okay. Yes, unflattering in that case, but it's not unflattering. It was a, a, an okay picture. I just don't like how my hair looks like it in that photo. All right. My next question. Do you want to trade off asking each other questions or do you just want me to ask you a bunch of questions and you ask me a bunch of questions? <laughs> Well, I would ask you the same question, but I know you don't have any. Oh, okay. I don't have unflattering photos. <laughs> Thank you. I have unflattering photos of you. I'm pretty sure I have unflattering photos of you, but would you get mad if I was to share those unflattering photos or if Simon was to share some of those unflattering photos? Well, okay. So to be honest, I have no problem being 100% myself. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of unflattering photos of me exist. I... Don't e I don't even believe I've seen any of them. A lot of people just take unflattering photos of me. And to be honest, I don't really care. I don't really care that people have them. I don't care if they're shared because I feel like because I've most likely not seen them, I would find them hilarious to see. I'd be like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> and I feel like if you actually look on Simon's Instagram, there is a picture of us making funny faces. And I would say that could be considered unflattering, but I did not care. And people that comment on it, they're just like, OMG, LOL, that's so funny. And I'm like, thanks, guys. So that, that's why I'm like, unflattering, I don't know. It's just like, realistically, you can't always look perfect. Yeah, I think I'm not going to get upset about it because like you said, it's it's true to us. Yeah. It just happens to be documented 
and crystallized a moment in time. And I mean, the podcast photo right now as it stands. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a photo of you and I in our pajamas with our hair sticking up. Well, my yes. hair is kind of weird. My hair is totally but your wacky. Hair's, <laughs> your hair is just completely like sticky up. Being, you're just. It, it, it oh, like adds funny. to uh, twice the volume of my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. That, that's totally. You see, that's the prime example of like, I don't care about the unflattering photos all that much. I guess the only photos I would be upset that are, would be posted is a photo of me being mad or like in an off mood. Because I know that there are a couple of photos of me where I'm just not in the mood to be photographed. Uh, and I'm pretty sure some of those photos have been deleted if I do not look like myself. Like I'm just upset. And in those cases, I would just say, I understand why you would want to post this picture, but can you take it down? Because there's an energy connected to that photo that I don't want people to kind of see. Yeah. Because we all have our off days. And sometimes it's just, we have to still participate, even if we're upset. And that energy sometimes sticks onto a photo, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Would you like to ask the ne next question? I'm looking. I copied some of these photos, uh, these uh, questions, questions, and I have it somewhere else. But the question I want to ask is, what is the funniest thing you've done to get a crush's attention? So the funny thing is, I actually picked this question. <laughs> yeah, you did. I actually don't think I've done anything funny to get anybody's attention. But I guess, uh, I don't know if I want to say that. It's not really my story to tell. But I will say that when, before Simon and I started dating, I guess he would try to be funny, not to get my, my attention, but to like cheer me up. And I guess he, in a way, he still kind of does this, where like I just wasn't in a good mood one day, and he was like, he's like, what's wrong? He's like, do you want me to cheer you up? And I was like, you could try. He's like, what if? <laughs> and he starts talking about like, what if I were just to like strip into my boxers and run around in the middle of the street would that cheer you up and him just talking about it cheered me up and I was like but no please don't do that that's embarrassing <laughs> so I guess in a way that could be uh what was the question the the cutest or the funniest or the funniest uh, yeah okay so I guess that would be to me the funniest thing that Simon did in a way to make me happy cheer me up but it in it's not that I... I don't think I've done anything to get a crush's attention. To be honest, when I have had crushes, I never act on them. Usually, people would be the one that act on their crush on me. I guess Simon is the, like, exception. We were both mutually crushing. Not quite at the same time, but, you know, whatever. Interesting. What about you? Have you done anything to get a crush's attention? I don't think this is funny. I think it's kind of embarrassing. And then I kind of got over the crush right after that. Okay. In ninth grade, I was in a health class. And I think that's the only year, like health and development, like that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. where they talk about sexual ed and all that. And I guess the teacher for that class didn't want to teach and had us go outside and have a, an outdoor activity in the main quad of our high school. Okay. She had this boys versus girls strength challenge, which was really weird. And we created this human chain on both sides. And it was like a Red Rover kind of thing. Uh -huh. But we got to pick where we would have to try to break the chain. And I obviously picked one closer to my the crush that I had, but uh, guys tend to be much stronger and have a, a stronger hold. So when I ra ran, I couldn't break through. break the human chain. I kneeled forward and fell back and hit my head on a sprinkler. Ouch. That sounds painful. It's painful. And I was just, I know it's not funny, but obviously everybody else laughed because it's that kind of situation. I fortunately did not cry. I rubbed my head and I sat out the rest of the, the game because technically I didn't break the chain, so I was out. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, oh. Uh, and it was in the middle of the day, so I didn't fall asleep. I didn't do anything. I didn't even check 
the nurse or anything because I didn't crack my head open. Fortunately, it, the fall wasn't that bad. I fell on my butt and then I felt like I hit my head back and hit the sprinkler. But that's an embarrassing way that I tried to get a crush's attention. That's interesting. I like this story. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I have never told this story. The only people who know this story is the people who were in that class. That's so weird. Yeah. So I felt bad. The guy that I was trying to break the chain with checked in with me like throughout the day. And my other friend found out because she used to ride the bus with this guy Mm -hmm. all the time. And he told her, like, hey, how's Kimberly going? Is doing? Is she okay? And she got worried because she wasn't in the class. She's like, what do you mean? What happened? And it's like, she fell, she hit her head. Uh, it's like, how's she doing? And she messaged me and she's like, hey, I heard from this person. What happened? I was like, it's something stupid. But yeah, that's a interesting way I tried to get a crush's attention. That That is interesting. I'm glad I asked this question. I would have never known that otherwise. <laughs> and now all our other... <laughs> Well, I mean, but I picked it. (laughs) And now all our other uh, friends and family that listen to our podcast know the story. Good thing you don't know who the crush is, though. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I get my my turn to ask a question now. Yes? Okay. Um, Oh, this one's my favorite. Well, not my favorite, but I, I saw it and I was like, I already know. What animal most closely resembles you? What animal? I think a dog resembles you. Yes. Can you elaborate, please? Uh, energetic, only wants to eat, sleep, play, and make noise. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't see it, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dogs, they're so fascinating. They're, they will sleep at night or stay awake at night and play around, make a lot of noise, bark, chase birds and squirrels. Like our dog, for example, actually plays with his toys and he's just full of energy. And I feel like I can resemble that. Even though I don't showcase that I have a lot of energy, I know that my body has a lot of energy. Mm hmm. I don't know what other animal I would be if it wasn't for dogs, though. Oh. But this is describing who you are currently, like what animal you think, right? That yes. matches you. Okay. Okay. I have my next question. How about you? Oh, oh, okay. Mm. So let me tell you. Uh, the first animal I thought of, I was like, you know what? That kind of works. That kind of fits. And I thought of a hedgehog. Those little hedgehogs. So... A lot of people always make the comments of, like, my size, like, oh, I'm small. I'm not tiny, but I'm small. And so I was like, oh, yeah, like a little cute hedgehog. I'm not saying I'm cute, but it's just like you look at the hedgehog and it's like, oh, it's small. You have to be delicate, treat it kindly. It's like, but they have those little porcupine little needles. They're not entirely sharp, but, you know, you you look at it and you're like, ooh, I should be careful. So it's just like a little animal you have to be cautious with. So that's kind of why I picked it. You just you said that was the first animal though you, that I thought of. Yeah. Okay. What other animal did you think of? I didn't really think of another animal. It's just I I feel like there should be another animal that I could think of that has to do a little bit with more like aggressive behavior because I'm told that although I'm small, I've got a bit of an attitude. Not to like everybody, but it's just. I could be spicy. That's what I call it, spicy. I tell Simon all the time he's spicy. Like when he's like sassy or or he's just got a little extra um, attitude to him, I call it spicy. Okay. Yeah. So I need an animal that has a little spice. So I'm a hedgehog with a little salsa bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I I can see that. Yeah. That's who I am. You said you had a follow-up question, though? Yeah. So, since this is the animal that you would say fits into who you are, technically, what animal would you like to be? And, like, why? Like, oh, because it's beautiful and I want to be beautiful. <laughs> um, honestly? <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me. 
I, I <laughs> not because Kimmy. of its beauty. <laughs> oh, do you want to be a peacock? Oh, I could be a peacock. Oh, wait, what were you going to be? No, <laughs> don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sticking with that answer. I want to be a peacock. No, what were you going to say before? I wanted to be a sloth. Oh, <laughs> that's funny because you wanted to be lazy. Nice, yeah. nice. And just lounge around. Lazy, sleep around, probably die because I grabbed my arm uh, instead of a branch. Mm. That's interesting. You, we We are like completely different people <laughs> what did you want to pick for that some type of bird i'm not entirely sure which bird because i mean i i'm not uh i don't know the proper term for like people that study birds sorry but i like birds a lot i like the idea of flying and i i would like totally be into that just being able to just like fly around and soar i don't want to be like a hawk or an eagle, although that sounds really cool. I, I am not big dog type of bird. I'd probably be like a, a little hummingbird or a sparrow or something. Initially, I thought of a swan. Because of its beauty, it's like it majestic, but you also don't want to be near it because it might attack uh, you. Okay, hit me with another question. I got two. Now you got to do a double. If your life was a movie, what would it be called and why? <laughs> I already answered that in the chat. Did you see? <laughs> Yes, I did, but I want you to answer it here. Oh, okay. So I answered, um, what else could go wrong? <laughs> because I felt like, I feel like that's kind of my life motto. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you guys have already heard the stories about like all my accidents and memories and stuff. So I feel like that's very much like fit into who I am now. Like that's built in me. It's like, wow, what else could go wrong? Something else happens. And I was like, well, I mean, at least that's over. What else could go wrong? Uh, so I feel like that could be like my, my, uh, the name of my movie, or at least my motto for sure. What about you? I think I would probably call the movie Dreamer. Okay. And just because I have all of these things that I want to do and the limitations that I have make it impossible for me to achieve them. So I'm just constantly in a dream-like state. And I just am constantly absorbing a lot of other things that make me want to dream that kind of lifestyle. I, I feel like a lot of people could probably fit into your movie of Dreamer. Everybody like has dreams and aspirations that they, I guess, continue to dream because they don't make reality sometimes, yep. you know? That's very suited to reality. Yes. Uh, you wanted me to come up with another question, correct? Um, okay. So the question that I have for you... Hit me with it. If you had the world's attention... The entire world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you say? And actually, let me keep track of those 30 seconds. So I'll let you think about it for a second. Okay, I kind of read this and I, I was thinking about the answer already. But I, I also had the same thought you did. Let's time it. So let's go ahead and start your 30 seconds. But can, can I just like get a... Get, oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> okay. Do you want to start your timer now? Or do you don't, let me know when you want to start your timer? Uh, I guess let me just brainstorm a little bit. I want to bring up everybody needs to get their poop together. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, God. What else do I want to say? I, I, I want to think about this because, like, what if these are, like, the most important 30 seconds of my life, which, I mean, I guess kind of are. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, God. The only thing that comes to mind with these 30 seconds when you have the whole world is, like, the whole world's attention is a lot of people. And people are probably going to reference this for the rest of your life. The only thing I can think of is Shia LaBeouf's Just Do It video thing why <laughs> because I, I know it wasn't 30 seconds but it's like you know there's so many moments in, in life where everyone is turning attention to the thing another example would be like the most recent presidential debate. oh yes debates elections are coming up yeah yes so right now when we're recording this it is 
voting season. But by the time that this is released, it's probably near the end of voting season. All right. Do I have to take up the whole 30 seconds? Because I could just like leave with like a 10 second thing and just be like, all right, I'm out. Like mic drop moments? Yeah, kind of. Uh, Sure. All right. Time me. Ready? Yes. Listen to a Playful Escape podcast. Goodbye. <laughs> That's it. Just self-promo. <laughs> that wasn't even five seconds. <laughs> you see? Who needs 25 extra seconds to talk to the world? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, if everybody listens to this podcast, I'll have way more time to talk to the world. Don't you think? Why, why would I need a stressful 30 seconds to send a message when if just that one message gets them to listen to all this goodness? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's my argument. <laughs> Man. Okay, that's, uh, that's, okay. A valid point, a valid point. <laughs> a very valid point. <laughs> you see, I'm good at this. Yes. All right, what about you? Hit me with it. Um, well, I was thinking of the memes that I had just mentioned about the <laughs> you were kind of in your situation. Yeah. But if I was to have 30 seconds, I would say... Right now is the time for us to get our life together and start taking care of each other and loving one and of and loving one another. Take the time to appreciate what we have and don't take it for granted and listen to a playful escape podcast and share it with all your friends and family. Thief. <laughs> Unoriginal content. <laughs> <laughs> we are sisters. We, great minds think alike. All right. Fine. I don't even know how long that message was, but... Oh, I know I didn't time it either. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> we, we could check it later. That's fine. It wasn't 30 seconds. Then we would... Oh, and then to utilize that attention a little bit more, I will give a montage of photos of us and photos of things that needed to be showcased. So that's how I would utilize it. Not just like radio broadcasting. I would also use visuals. Yeah, that sounds good. Visuals would be cool too. So... Would you like take over for 30 seconds on like on broadcasting t television, YouTube, streaming websites? Well, what's going on? Well, if we're taking over the world for 30, it's taking over now. I like how I changed that. If <laughs> Domination <laughs> of the world. <laughs> well, if we had the world's attention for 30 seconds, I think that would say completely control technology and broadcasting companies for a full 30 seconds. All right, so we need a hacker friend to do this for us and deliver our messages. <laughs> I'm like, I think I might know one. I mean, he's a tech-savvy person, but I don't know how hackery he can be. All right. Uh, is it my turn for the next question? Yes. All right. You only get three words to describe yourself. What are they? Um, sleepy, observant. And helpful. Okay. My three words would be silly, energetic, and do you find this a little more difficult when you're limiting to one word? It's the most important one. <laughs> what were my words again? <laughs> silly. <laughs> Line! <laughs> I already forgot the second one. <laughs> I said energetic. So it was silly, energetic, and caring. I'm going to say caring. Okay. Yeah. I feel like those are all pretty like well-rounded as to who I am. My turn for a question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you could be any fictional character, who would you be and why? I saw this question. I'm not entirely sure. Fictional character, like TV or like um, TV, movie, books. books. Okay. Something made up. Mm, oof. That's hard. I'm torn between three. All right. Well, you go first then. For me, it would be either the doctor 
from Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. He gets to travel through space and time. And it's just time travel sounds so fascinating. But the downfall about being the Doctor is that he has to know everything and he causes a lot of trouble. And that might be too much for me. (laughs) Responsibility? No. (laughs) Or this is where the second one comes in. I would like to be the doctor's companion who is in a world, taken away from the world to explore everything. The downside about that, either I die during those adventures or I come back in my ordinary world, having already lived this fantasy kind of adventures and end up dying depressed because I probably am longing for that. And the third character would probably be Sherlock Holmes. Mm. Really smart, but depending on which version of Sherlock Holmes you're thinking of, but really smart, always solving the mysteries, but dies and put gets a lot of pressure. All of my characters die. Everybody dies. But yeah, those are the three characters that I would choose between. I don't know. I... I find that really hard because there's a lot to consider by becoming a different person. You're also taking on their problems and that itself can be problematic. We are making this question much more harder than it needs to be. (laughs) I know, but I like to think of myself as a responsible human being and I think about everything. So that means, I mean, thinking about. It doesn't need to be a human being. It could be like an animal. A fish. Who would want to be a fish? You could be Nemo. No, I don't want to be Nemo. (laughs) You're making these questions so deep. All right, you know what? I'll be Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Why? Just so I can swim in the water with the tail. And become a human? Yeah, so I can come back to normal. And lose your voice? Oh my gosh, I would be so happy if you would lose your voice. No, but then who would, who would you interview for this podcast? That is true, but just a couple moments of silence would be so wonderful. I don't even bother you. You're the one that's screeching laughing while I'm in class. I was working. Then why were you laughing so much? Because I was talking to my coworkers. See? So I need some silence, not you. I'm more silent than you. That is very inaccurate. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Okay, I guess it's your turn to pick a question. All right. um, Oh, uh, this is a good one. Would you rather live uh, or would you rather have a home on the beach or in the mountains? Um, Both. No, no, no. You get one. Select one and explain why. I can't live on a cliff near the beach? No. No, you cannot. Am I at least within driving distance of the beach? If I'm in the mountains? Depends on where you live. I don't know. Just pick one or the other. You can visit the beach. I'm not telling you you can't. It's just your home. Do you want it? Would you prefer it to be on the beach or in the mountains? Okay, I would pick... In the mountains, just because it would be harder for people to be, like, really close to my home. If I live on the beach or really, really close to the beach, it'll be heavily populated. Unless it's private property, then I would definitely want to live on the beach. But in this case and in this scenario, I am going to assume I don't get that luxury of a private beach. So in the mountains. No, no, you don't. Okay. So in the mountains. I would say the same in the mountains, partially because I already know that Simon really wants to live in the mountains, secluded from the world, away from everybody. I make Simon seem like he's just like a really unhappy person, doesn't like people. That's totally not it. People, we're like totally approachable. People always come up to us and like talk to us. We're just super friendly, but you know. Sometimes you crave something different. Yeah. I don't want to so much say like isolation or, um, you know, separation from everybody is good, but it's for what we would like in life. We would like a bigger space. So I don't think I could get that by the beach, to be honest. I I wouldn't get what I want from living by the beach. I would have to do it like in the mountains. Next question. If you can trade places with 
mom or dad for 24 hours, who would you pick and what would you do? I thought about that and I wouldn't really want to switch positions. They all have, they both have their stressful things and I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that I don't desire any of their lives. That's not at all it. But there's stress in their lives. But I guess if I had to, I'd probably pick mom just because I already know a lot about uh, what our mom does for work. And I feel like I could do it. And it could be a little entertaining to get a little taste of how she works and does things. Also, I want to see what her taste buds taste because she makes some incredible food. <laughs> I want to. I want to learn. I want to be like, mm, yes, that's perfect. No more, <laughs> no more spices. No more salt. Yeah, she doesn't measure anything. She just uses a handful, but we don't know how big that handful is. Yeah, her handful and my handful are like totally different. You have small hands, that's why. Yeah. So, if you could jump into f a pool full of something, what would it be? A pool full of something. You know those pillows that are like really, really, really soft that kind of makes it look like you're hugging air? I think I know exactly which pillows you're talking about. With those little ball things in them? Yes and no. I felt a pillow yesterday at the store. <laughs> this is such a random statement. But there was a pillow okay. at the store that I went to yesterday that it squished kind of like one of those weird stress balls that would just take the pressure. Oh, like memory foam kind of? No, memory foam, foam is like stiffer. No, I know. But it's like a foam that it just like kind of sinks in and then just stays... And then it slowly decompresses? Yes. Okay. Like that. So I felt like that in the pillow. But then the ones with all of those little balls in it, kind of like a beanbag chair ball. Uh, yeah. Beans, that would be cool too. So basically a pool full of very weird sensory pillows. Okay. How about you? I would have just picked like a ball pit. Like, uh, you know, like the little kids ball pit. Oh, yeah. But just a giant pool filled of it because when I'm not a little kid anymore I can stand up in that thing I, so I would think that would be pretty cool also I'm kind of a little paranoid of getting like sand dust little balls of like memory foam and stuff like that like all over the place because then I'm just gonna be like ah, get it off <laughs> just I don't know feels like too much okay I am trying to see what else I can come up with what other questions that I saw that were interesting to me what is the most spontaneous thing you've ever done i don't think i'm very spontaneous to be honest with you that's why i asked this question yeah i i i don't believe there that, that exists i'm not very spontaneous so nothing yeah like i said I, i'm not spontaneous so <laughs> the funny thing is yesterday i was helping simon work on his car and um, literally, as we were putting everything away, he tells me to get on the floor jack because he was going to, like, lift me up a little bit. The moment he said it, I was like, oh, get on it. I was, like, walking to it. And then I was like, wait a second. No, I could fall. I don't want to get hurt. So that's what, like, that could have been something spontaneous. Like, yeah, let me get on it. But no, I, I tend to think about things. And I know... <laughs> I know not to risk my well-being. <laughs> so, and the funny thing is we always talk about how um, men don't live as long as women do. And that was like one of my moments where I was like, I understand why. Because if I had told him the opposite, he would have just got on. He's like, okay. And then I would have just been <laughs> lifting him up. So, yeah, I don't think I'm very spontaneous. I don't, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that I have any... To be honest with you, I think a, a lot of things that have occurred in my life have led me to not be spontaneous. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you learn from your mistakes, kind of. And I guess since I've already been through some things, I just know it was like, oh, let's think about this before we do anything. So I, that's why I tend not to be spontaneous. 
but the, I don't I don't I also want to make it seem like oh but I live such a safe and protected life it's like no I have my fun it's just not usually spontaneous fun it's usually thought out and planned wow that seems so dry and boring just tell me what spontaneous things have you done in your life most of them have been on dates. Like, right after work, I I was supposed to go home. And instead, I went to the aquarium. When did you go to the aquarium? Uh, last year. Hmm. The, those were the days that I had a shorter shift. I would have a, a four or five hour shift. And I would open for work. So I got out pretty early. Literally got off of work, walked to my car. By the time I got to the car, I just got on the freeway and went to this aquarium. And that was very spur of the moment. Like, we showed up and bought our tickets there. Um, gone to Six Flags. Not super spontaneous. It was kind of planned, but it was just like, I don't know what to do. Okay, let's go to Six Flags kind of thing. And we'll do it tomorrow because it's too late right now. Yeah, that's the only thing that I can think of that was, like, really, really spontaneous spur of the moment. Like, let's just go and do this. But I have spontaneous thoughts. I just don't execute them. I always have the need to go out for a drive and just go to a different area for a change of scenery. I just haven't done it. But I'm going to push myself to be more spontaneous in that kind of way. I figured out what's the most spontaneous thing I've done. Oh. This podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, literally the one we're recording. Usually we, like, talk about what we're going to talk about. And then literally before we started recording, I told you I didn't want to do the last podcast idea we were going to do. So I changed it. And that's what we're doing. This is the most spontaneous thing I've done. Asking you questions. Not even having questions planned out. We're just reading them <laughs> off of a, off of a, some other questions. Yeah. We don't have this planned out at all. So yeah, I think this is the most spontaneous podcast I've ever filmed. All right. <laughs> is it my turn to ask a question? Yes. Okay. This is an excellent question. What does husband or wife material mean to you? Mm. I like both. So to you, what does uh, being a wife mean? So like, how would you, like, what do you, would, ah, uh, man, that's kind of hard. I guess let me say it the other way. It's like, what kind of guy or what guy would you say is husband material what qualifications does he fit and then likewise what would you expect people to see in you for you to be considered wife material okay i was thinking of a different approach because you got it very specific in your questioning mm -hmm. Okay. I was thinking, like, what do you consider husband material? And I was just going to... Oh, well, then go there. Qualities. That's fine. Qualities. Hit me with them. Because I don't know anyone who would fit the husband material. I don't. I can't list names. The only if No, I wasn't saying names. I was saying qualities. But the way you were phrasing it to me sounded like, oh, who fits in this frame racket oh, that no. is husband material? No. But qualities-wise, yes. Uh, caring puts family first. Very responsible, hardworking, smart with their money, spontaneous acts of love, kind of. Whether it is going on a date, uh, like gift giving, um, something to surprise their significant other. It doesn't have to be physically intimate, but it has to be intimate in some way or another. Um, Open-minded, good with communication. And willing to explore the unknown. That's some checklist you got there. <laughs> I think, it's, well, not everything on there is necessary. But those are qualities that I think definitely need to be in a husband material. At least four of those have to be. Which is family, caring, responsible with money, and I forgot the other one. As far as qualities that make me... Wife material, I guess, 
would probably be the caring aspect, the adventurous, fun kind of type of person, and the responsibilities. Love how I was able to list more qualities in a guy than in myself, because I don't know what actually makes wife material. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know what people will expect in their significant other. I, I guess it was a lot to ask of you to include what possible... I suppose, what characteristics do you think would be important to a person that you think they could find in you? So this is this is your um your your opportunity to shine and give people their little sneak peek. It's like if you're looking for someone who could be wife material that fits these qualifications, these are reasons why I think I could be wife material. There might be moments in the rest of this recording where there's going to be some weird background noise. There is some construction going on and we cannot avoid some of that noise. We are going to do our best to kind of silence ourselves in the moments that the noise gets significantly loud, but we cannot avoid it all the way through. I've been muting myself because I think it's mostly on my end. Yeah, it is on Cindy's end. It's closer to her. She's in a room where most of the construction can be heard. I don't think it can be heard on my end, but we are trying to monitor that. Where we had just left off, Cindy was saying, what are some qualities... Basically, promote myself as a wife is what my understanding was. It's your, yeah, your little way of being like, I think I could be wife material because of these qualities that I have. So go ahead, talk about yourself a little positively, please. Okay, positively. I guess I can just do say this based on what I have been told in previous relationships. All right, but don't read too much into it, though. No. Uh, I tend to put people first. I, I don't always put myself first. I put others first. I am genuinely caring and very empathetic towards others' emotions when it comes to it. Like I give them my time and I make time for them. I am caring and kind of motherly in a sense like I want to take care of them. I want to make sure that they're fed. I want to make sure that they're just properly taken care of and I tend to be a person who checks in to see how they are doing mentally emotionally that kind of stuff physically I'm you can usually see what's going on but if someone's in pain I would assist them to go to the doctor if they need to be or something like that I'm very accepting of situations and of others uh, I don't try to place judgment on anyone else's situations or anything I'm very open in regards to that and I'm willing to learn, I guess. When it comes into relationships, I'm willing to learn how to improve a relationship if it comes to that kind of situation. Okay, so you're willing to learn in something that could help your relationship. Yep. Okay. So I was going to ask, like, are you willing to learn how to cook, clean, do all that stuff? I mean, not saying that a woman has to do all those things, but sometimes you need a little balance, you know? Yeah, I'm willing to learn. That doesn't mean I'm going to be doing all the household right, chores exactly. or cooking or no. anything, but I am, I'm willing to learn. I don't know how to cook, not really. I, I can clean, just not probably not to mom standards, but I can clean. Don't you be rolling your eyes at me. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like, oh yeah, mom standards. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, I'm willing to learn in that kind of case. All right, all right. Next question. <laughs> Well, now you have to answer that. Well, what I look for, who is husband material, I don't think I need to give a description. I already have my possible husband. Um, I'm not interested in looking for another one. I got one. Thank you very much. Wife material, I, I like I said, I've already have a husband in line. Therefore, he has a wife in mind. So I'm not putting myself out there for people to look for me. Sorry, fellas. Ladies, if you're interested, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> there. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> okay. I think we have time for maybe two more questions. Okay, and make then... it good. I'm trying to think of some hard-hitting questions. 
some interesting questions. Maybe sibling related questions. Mm -hmm. If you want to make it hard, then why don't you pick? Uh, <laughs> I just saw this question. I, I think it's just amusing. <laughs> the question is, you've been given an elephant. You can't get rid of it. What would you do with it? That's such a weird <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, but I found it. It's a totally random question. But it's like, that's a good question. What would you do with an elephant? I would protect the elephant from possible ivory hunters. I would probably find a proper way to give it shelter, maybe take it to the zoo and constantly visit the elephant. I would visit my elephant at the zoo, maybe go on a ride, like actually ride the elephant around kind of thing. But the fun fact about the elephant that I just thought of well, remembered is that you know how we react when we see like yeah I said this to you <laughs> I, I don't remember how I remember it but I, I don't remember how I got access to seeing this information but yeah basically the the post or the little video is elephants reactions to humans are equivalent to humans reactions to puppies so basically elephants see us as puppies <laughs> Yeah, basically, which is, like, super cute also. Yeah. See, sometimes you send me these things, but I see it late at night. I don't remember where I see it, who sent it to me. Yeah, I know. That's so funny. Uh, okay, let's see which one would be the most final question that would be useful for us. Useful? I don't think any of these questions are useful. <laughs> No, they're not useful, but I mean, we get to learn a little bit more about each other in this way. I suppose. Okay. I, I think this one's a good one. If you had to work, but you didn't need the money, what would you choose to do? What was the question again? Can you repeat the question? The question was, if you didn't have to work for money, what would you choose to do? So that's the super interesting thing. The more I've been thinking about this, the more... It fits into the kind of life that I've mentioned that I would like to live. If I already probably using information that if people have been listening to our podcast continuously already have. If I lived in the mountains, had a big enough land where I could grow stuff in my gardens, do some beekeeping, composting, all the little things like that. I've partially lately been looking into like making things. I'm not entirely sure if we've mentioned this in the podcast, but like last year or the year before for Christmas, I made all the Christmas presents for our family that we were giving away. Well, just about all, not every single thing. Some things were just like bought and gifted, but uh, just about everything I, I handmade and um, gifted them to people. So I would like to do little things like that. Or um, I've been following this person on Twitter who opened up a flower boutique. I, I thought that was really cool, too. I'd like to get into, like, making um, ceramics and stuff just because I have an interest in it. Little things like that I feel like I'd really like to do. I could get into, like, the candle making business. I don't know. doesn't matter. <laughs> I would do anything. So just something crafty. Yeah, I like I like making things with my hands or putting things together. I I think that same Christmas where we where I handmade all our Christmas presents, I also decorated the house for Christmas and I like arranged little flower bouquets for our tables, which uh, mom just bought like a bunch of like red roses and like white flowers and stuff, and I just put put them together as like a centerpiece. So little stuff like that. You know, actually, before, technically, my first job was when I was working with you. And um, one of the things that I thought I would really like to do is, like, party planning. Like, people could hire me to help them decorate their home, get ready for a party. 
because I actually have been doing that a lot. Like I've been doing it. So when we used to work together, I used to do it for our, our family. I would decorate their house and put together the little goodie bags for the kids or, you know, stuff like that that required a little tedious work to get things together. I loved doing that. For Simon's family, I've decorated my fair share of parties and houses for their birthdays and anniversaries or wedding announcements, pregnancy announcements, whatever it is. I like I've decorated my fair share of homes on his side of the family too. I've always thought like that could be really cool to just like I guess professionally plan little events but not necessarily like where I would be an event planner just like an extra hand for you if you don't know how to like plan a party to like help you decorate plan but it's more like for kids because like you know kids you always you always give kids goodie bags with little toys and knickknacks and stuff that's kind of what I would like so event planning kind of but in a smaller intimate setting yeah and or creating a homemade items. I didn't bring up my, my pins or buttons or anything that pins, pins or earrings that I would have created. Oh, I would have done earrings in the past too. I used to make jewelry. I've done a lot of things in my life, I feel like. And I just keep like scattering yeah. myself out there. No, I think it's good to kind of learn a bunch of different things. Yeah. And I it's not that I like stop doing an, any of them because I don't like them. I usually like them. I just, I, I live a fast paced life, if you will. And I don't have time for those slower paced things. So like, I know how to sew, I know how to uh, make scarves, although I don't, I mean, I made like seven or eight scarves one year for Christmas also, <laughs> which was a pain in the butt, but I did. I guess I'd really just like a little storefront where I can do multiple little things. So I wouldn't have to select or limit myself to one item, one thing. Like, I don't want to just be a candle making business because I'm going to get tired of just making candles. You know what I mean? I think that would take off. Actually being a place where you can have workshops. That's the thing. I would love to have workshops. That's, I was telling Simon how... I, I've always had this thought or plan or idea that I would like to have my own little business where I could sell things in bulk because I do like, you know, the aspect of cutting out, you know, unintentional like items like plastic and stuff like that. So I could sell things that I used to make my items for Christmas that one year. So it's like, you know, oils and butters and stuff because I used stuff to make like oils for like skin oil and um, the butters could also be used for like your skin basically it's most of the stuff but you can make it like in a whipped form which makes it lighter you can make it in a solid form which makes it thicker or you can um, put it in oils and sprays there's like so many options and Partially, the scientific part of me actually wants to do trial and errors, testing what's like the best way to make something before I teach people how to do it because I want to give them the best outcome. But yeah, the whole like idea of workshops and stuff is my storefront would have the supplies that you could buy to then go to the workshop to make something. You know what I mean? But it wouldn't just be, like I said, candles and stuff like that. It would be anything. So since I do like this like eco-conscious stuff, I've, I've been realizing a lot of the things that I've been taught like by our mom, some people don't have the, the common knowledge of. So like how I know how to sew, I thought, oh, that's common knowledge. People just know how to sew. You know, people have to mend their clothes at times. And sometimes that's not the case. You know, some people don't know how to sew. And I actually have a story. Shout out to my friend if you're listening. I actually sewed his jacket. <laughs> he ripped it during school. Okay, so I'm that person that has everything in their bag. And I had um, a needle and thread kit in my backpack. And he ripped his jacket and he was so upset. I felt so bad. I was like, I could fix it for you. I might have something in my backpack. 
my friends couldn't believe that I had it, but I actually did have a gray colored thread that I actually used to fix this jacket. It wasn't the best mending. It was just to like get by. I wonder, I wonder how my friend's jacket is doing. If you're listening, give me an update. How's your jacket? <laughs> just randomly text me. <laughs> my jacket's good <laughs> or bad. I don't know. Tell me. The hole got bigger. Yeah, I don't know. Just let me know. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's a very interesting approach as far as like you had to work, but you didn't need to worry about money. That's a very good um, approach, a very good path to take it on. What about you? I thought of three things. Yeah, I saw you taking notes. <laughs> uh, well, I was thinking that's of the things you were interested in. <laughs> oh, so you take notes on me? Thanks. <laughs> yes. Uh, I would probably be a book reviewer. Ooh, I like that. Uh, where I would just have to read books. And that would actually push me to read books and just write about them, uh, if they were good, if they were bad, maybe kind of analyze them because that's a, the English grad school side of me. But I would want to review them just for the content, not for the symbolism of it. I would probably also be into crafting, but actually hand making those journals, but mm-hmm. in a deeper way because I had just bought fabric yesterday to make more oh and probably just test out or play video games kind of thing be like a streamer of some sorts learn how to play video games but like broadcast it to live because i am not i'm a gamer now but i still take a long time to learn how to play games you know it's actually funny i actually had this thought that i would love to create a channel where I would also test out games, but people don't understand how bad I am at games. I am literally that young child that you pretend you're playing with and I'm hitting all the buttons on the control, trying to kill, die, run away. Anything that I can, I'm pushing all the buttons. Who knows what these buttons do? I never know what these buttons do. I am also imagining you as a child who you just give the control to to play and the control is unplugged yeah yeah exactly that's what i'm saying (laughs) like i i 100 percent want to do that because i think it'll be crazy entertaining people don't believe me when i say i can't even play mario brothers and beat the first level like that that it used to never happen to me and like i like games I know I do. I like watching people play them because I actually follow a lot of uh, YouTubing gamers. I like watching them. I like the storylines. I like I like how people get affected by them. But I know I can't play them. I can't. I, I, I don't know why. I, I just, I'm not very good at it. So I would like to one day randomly just on the spur of a moment spontaneously create a youtube channel where i would try to be a gamer but i would say non-gamer plays this it could just be a simple racing game and i would probably epically suck at it and it'd be super entertaining and then i love i love horror stuff so i feel like Although I get scared and it like makes me upset sometimes getting scared, I, I laugh afterwards. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I got so scared. Yeah. So I would love to play all like the scary games that I've seen in the past that people play. And I've always thought, oh, that'd be so cool to play. It's just like I just suck at gaming. I can't play. So I'm just gonna watch everybody else. I obviously think to me, that seems like my kind of content that I would watch. So I feel like it'd be super entertaining. I would love to do that with you. Yeah. I would be the one who's like, yes, I kind of know how to play games now. But here we are both going to try to play this game that we are not familiar with at all. Figure out what the buttons are. And then the entire time just be like, why can't I do X? Yeah, no, I... I I'm pretty sure although you take a long time to play to learn how to play a game, I feel like for me it'll probably be pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. No. On YouTube. Oh, I was going to say on her <laughs> pod- podcast? No, that's not possible. 
<laughs> no, not on our podcast. That, that would not be possible. That might be a live streaming kind of thing. Yeah, I'm actually pretty excited about the things that we can do with this podcast. I already gave you like the really exciting idea I had recently. It's we're gonna have like a holiday special that I'm we're trying. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're trying. We're planning, planning, hopefully. That I had like this really cool idea that I really would like to do. And I thought of it and I was like, this sounds so fun. And I just, I, I really want to make it happen. So I don't even know if it's only going to be, I guess the best way to get the full experience is if we have our Patreon up and running by that time to be a part of our Patreon. If not, we're going to do our best to make it purely just something you can listen to but the whole point is that you should get the visual sense as well and it would make it like even more entertaining yeah i would i agree yeah okay i think that's it for today's episode yeah yeah i think that's it i think i'm good i'm done I i've said my piece <laughs> Well, thank you again for listening to a Playful Escape podcast. Make sure you guys all follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I believe we are on YouTube now with the handle A Playful Escape. Send us an email. Let us know if there's something that you guys want us to talk about. If you guys are loving the podcast, I believe we are now on Apple Podcasts. So you guys can rate us five stars. Share this with your friends. Share this with your family if you're not related to us. Or share it with your other family members. I'm trying to remember what else. Oh, our email is a playfulescape at gmail.com. Anything else that you want to say, Cindy, before we sign off? Goodbye, people. I'm sorry this is not just my podcast, but it is what it is. It's both of our podcasts. We are running it together. All right. Until next time. Bye.